plenty of room at the bottom. Economics and connected labor. Connected labor is the new Satan. Every day, another article touts the evils of Uber, describing founder Travis Kalanick as the bastard child of Ayn Rand and Clayton Christensen. If Kalanick were simply another Silicon Valley entrepreneur with another mid-range technology startup, he wouldn't be the poster child for rapacious technology billionaires. Instead, like Andrew Carnegie and John T. Rockefeller and Cornelius Vanderbilt, like the barons of an earlier Gilded Age, he has become the convenient repository for all the disappointments of the connected economy. But Kalanick did nothing to initiate this change. He didn't work at Motorola engineering the first mobile. He didn't work at CERN inventing the web. Kalanick's genius lay in recognizing the value of the marriage of those two. Apple may have invented the smartphone, but Kalanick made it a tool for the alienation of labor, a far more lucrative and disruptive act. It was not an original act. In 1995, Craig Newmark posted a job section to his fledgling website. It rapidly became a clearinghouse for people who needed labor or wanted to offer their labor. The basic connectivity offered by the early web became, in time, the chief moneymaker for Craigslist as it proceeded to devour the newspaper's golden rivers of employment advertising. Now, full-time employment quickly hived off into sites like Monster and Seek, but Craigslist continued to fill a need for on-demand labor. Before Craigslist, newspaper classifieds had filled this niche, but slowly and at considerable expense. Free to all, Craigslist demonstrated a global demand for a frictionless marketplace for connected labor. The mobile had an equally catalytic effect on the fluidity of labor markets. Part-time workers with mobiles could be summoned on a few minutes' notice to work unscheduled shifts, which is an economic benefit both for employer and for employee. By 2010, smartphone penetration in the United States had to reach 20%. It would grow 50% over each of the next two years. 50 million users created enough of a base for the beginnings of connected labor. Aggregation is the defining act of connected labor. Connected labor markets aggregate labor providers, connecting them into a pool of individuals that need that labor. Now, having aggregated demand to supply, the connected labor market maker simply inserts a toll booth at the point of connection, realizing revenue through every act of market formation. The aggregation of labor tends to place downward pressure on the value of that labor. In a crowded labor market, prices will tend to fall until it becomes uneconomic for the majority of participants in the market. That's the reductio ad absurdum of Marx's theory of capital, where capitalists have to lower their prices in order to remain competitive. In connected labor markets, the laborer working for himself is the capitalist. The dynamics of this race to the bottom have been amply demonstrated on Freelancer.com. The connected pool of individuals with uniformly high degrees of technical talent competing against other similarly talented individuals results in a pricing structure that tends to favor the lowest cost producer. And so in a curious echo of Marx's theory of colonialism, laborers in former colonies, countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh and India, they have lower costs of living and sell their labor into connected marketplaces at rates which individuals from more developed countries cannot match. If connected labor markets were perfectly frictionless, we would all be purchasing connected labor from low-cost producers in Myanmar or Rwanda. But until Google perfects a self-driving car and Uber fully alienates labor from all of its operations, we will continue to see connected labor pools conforming to a number of inalienable frictions. Those frictions are as follows. Territory, that is, any labor requiring physical presence bound to a location. Time, any labor that must be completed within a specific schedule talent, any labor that requires a specific and not easily mastered skill set, and trust, any labor that requires sensitivity 
or privacy. And every connected labor business model must satisfy at least one of these frictions. Uber satisfies territory and time. Freelancer satisfies talent and time. Paw Shake satisfies territory and talent. One Shift satisfies territory, time, and talent. Now, it should be noted that trust is one element that no connected labor market has yet built its business model around. The price of connected labor is directly proportional to the costs required to overcome these frictions. A short time frame will be more expensive than a longer one. A job that requires unskilled labor pays less than one that requires a high degree of skill. And labor in Sydney will always be more expensive than labor in Uzbekistan. Beyond all of these specific frictions, there is another, one that has only emerged in the last several months, as connected labor markets become more commonplace. Coherence. A connected labor market places very few constraints on those offering labor. There are no formal contracts which bind labor to a particular marketplace, and quite often laborers will be simultaneously participating in several connected labor markets. Now, although connected labor markets are not formally organized, that is to say, there's no union movement encompassing connected labor, as rational economic actors, laborers will tend to gravitate toward connected labor markets offering the best pay and conditions. Uber can lower the prices it pays drivers only until it begins to lose its pool of connected laborers to a competitor such as Get or Lyft. As there are no formal ties between connected laborers and connected labor markets, those markets can lose their labor supply very quickly. Now, in the early days of connected labor markets, labor had no alternative markets. But as connected labor markets mature, labor will flow to the pay and conditions which suit it best. For labor, there is no loyalty in connected labor markets. Second-generation connected labor firms, such as OneShift, have begun to offer services into their connected labor pool that makes participation within their connected labor market more attractive. They're beginning with the usual sorts of superannuation services one would expect in an employment situation. Superannuation for connected labor is a new and almost entirely underserved market segment. One shift has branched out also into services that increase the value of their labor pool. Launching later this year, One Shift Education promises to upskill laborers within the pool of connected labor, offering a path to higher wage connected labor. One Shift Education amplifies the talent of its connected labor pool, increasing the value of its own now captive labor pool, while simultaneously providing a significant barrier to entry to any competitors who would have to offer the same services to attract connected labor. Now in 2020, 80% of all adults worldwide will own a smartphone. And at that point, nearly all labor markets can be connected. Most of the multi-trillion dollar global labor market has not yet been connected. It hasn't been disrupted. It hasn't been transformed. And so the race to the bottom is not yet complete for connected labor. Over the next decade, as the global economy reprices labor, social dislocations will be both comprehensive and very painful. Yet it is important to remember that connected labor markets contain within them the capacity and the competitive need to improve the lot of connected labor. The future belongs to those with talents that cannot be automated or bought from a hundred million others. The future belongs to businesses that can transform frictions into opportunities. Thank you.